esports world is still reacting to the stunning video that Outside the Lines opt uh, obtained, which shows Rutgers head basketball coach Mike Rice hurling basketballs and yelling obscenities and homophobic slurs at his players during practice. Rutgers AD Tim Pernetti says when the school was made aware of his behavior, they suspended him for three games and fined him $50,000. But does the punish, uh, punishment fit the crime? First thoughts for you, Stephen A., when you saw this video. My first thought uh, is uh, it was two things, uh, Skip. Uh, number one, why does this man still have a job as the head basketball coach for Rutgers University? He should be fired. Let me just be clear and get that out the way. He should not be the head basketball coach for Rutgers, and I'm going to be very, very interested in seeing what they do today in light of the fact that this video has been out there. We have decried the actions of many coaches in the past in terms of their behavior, uh, including Bobby Knight, including Sean Woods just the other month uh, in, in November or December uh, for more head state. Uh, obviously, Mike Montgomery for Sanford, uh, Sanford mm -hmm. University. Uh, we, we pointed out all these things. It is nothing compared to what that video showed. And this man, I give him credit for this much. He certainly didn't discriminate. White players, black players, homosexuals, it didn't matter. I mean, slurs, throwing basketballs at the face. I mean, everything you could have imagined. I mean, he did everything but flat out cock back and punch somebody in the face. This man should be fired immediately. And I think that I would like an explanation from Rutgers athletic director uh, to Bernetti as well as the university itself. I want to know why it was just a three-game suspension and a $50,000 fine to begin with. The fact that you want to make a decision now shows me that all you're doing is reacting to the public outcry in light of the fact that outside the lines obtained this video. The fact is it should have been addressed from the moment they saw the video. The minute they saw what they saw, this man should have been fired. There is no excuse that he is still a head coach of Rutgers men's basketball. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be watching it today, the clock today. If this man has a job as head basketball coach of Rutgers University as of 3 p.m. this afternoon, I think that everybody should look into putting upon public pressure, bringing down public pressure on Rutgers University, not just their head coach, but their athletic director and their entire program. Because if you're going to uh, if you're going to approve or condone of this kind of behavior in any way when it comes to the basketball coach, who's to say you're not doing that with anything else pertaining to a student athlete? This man, Mike Rice, and you know how I am about calling for people's jobs, Skip. I do not like it, but this man needs to be fired by this afternoon. There's nothing else to talk about. He has to go. And by the way, you need a verdict before your show is over on 98.7 FM in New York right. City, right? That's right. 1 to 3 p.m. By 3 right. o'clock, you need a verdict. That's right. And I I'm with you on this. He should not be employed. Stephen A., I've spent the last couple hours trying to talk myself out of this because there's so much to like about Pernetti as an AD. I, I think he handles himself well in public. I, I've always thought of him as a really class act. But Stephen A., I'm sorry. I got to go one step farther. I'm with you on this. I think the AD needs to go as well as the coach. And I, I hate to do this, but he had his shot when he levied the fine, 50 grand, but only three game suspension, along with ongoing anger management classes. But Stephen A., the problem at that point in time, back in December, when the penalties came down, I believe that Pernetti overprotected his first big hire at Rutgers, who was Mike Rice. I'm not saying they're joined at the hip, but effectively, because of this video being released, they are. The video should have been released back in December. But you know and I know what would have happened if he, if Pernetti had released the video just to say, here's why I am suspending my coach. It, it is so, to use your favorite word, egregious. It is so over the line, both physically and verbally, that, that if he had released it back in December, we would have all screamed and said, what, what are you doing? You're only suspending him for three games? And yesterday, Pernetti told Jeremy Schaaf on Outside the Lines that, that he, what was the word he used? I, I don't appreciate the suggestion that I took this lightly because it was a first offense. Stephen A., 
It was the longest, most egregious first defense maybe in the history of first defenses because it went on for three <laughs> years. Right. It was practice after practice after practice. We only saw snippets of ongoing practice after practice video, but it was so over the line so often that it wasn't like your basic one-shot first defense, a DUI, or he got mad at a kid on campus and slapped him or whatever it might be. You'd say, okay, that was a first defense. This, this was... A forever first defense. It went so long that you have to step back and say, wait a second. I let this go on under my nose as the athletic director for three years of Mike Rice. You don't have a lot to show for it. He hasn't been very successful as the head coach at Rutgers. And it, what's the bottom line for any program, Stephen A.? Can you recruit? What do you think this will do to recruiting right now? Well, first Destroy of all, if, 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 I, if I'm a parent, my child, if, 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 I, if I have a son, rather, my child is not going to play for that man, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if I'm a parent of a son that is playing for that man and I see that, I'm not going to lie to you, Skip. I'm going to go up to Rutgers and, and I'm sorry because I work for ESPN and we're Walt Disney and we don't condone violence. I'd have dropped that man. You put your hands on my son like that. You would have done the things that I saw well, him do. In that video, yeah. I would have put my hands on it. I'm just, I I'm just being real with you. I believe that's what, put, didn't LeBron, put my hands on. LeBron James yeah. tweeted the, the same, same thing? thing. Yeah. Stephen that's A, right. Skip, I let me add this. You guys both say that Mike Rice needs to go. Skip, you say one step further by actually getting rid of the AD. We've yep. been told, according to people with knowledge of the situation, Mike Rice has been called into a meeting uh, with the AD, so perhaps we'll have a verdict well, uh, by the time uh, we get off the air. We just don't know that yet. I just want to uh, give you guys an update with that. I appreciate that, Kerry, but let me tell you something right now. I don't even understand what the meat is about. You know, come pack your bags, get on out of here. And again, you know, he's got to go. Now, now mind you, let's, let's, let's imagine for a second. Let's say, for example, we had heard that some kid put his hands on the coach, but we didn't have access to the video. Would not the kid have been the one getting excoriated? Would not the kid have been the one being compared to a Latrell Sprewell who choked P.J. Carlissimo sure. back in the 90s? We would have been talking about the kid saying, what is wrong with our generation? They don't understand rules and regulations. They don't understand authority. They don't understand protocol, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we would have been saying. This man is beyond excessive, and it's beyond bullying. As a coach, you know you can basically get away with that because any kid that's walking on campus that was confused confronted by the stuff that he was doing to those players, those players would have put their hands on anybody else. This man did that to those players because he knew that he could. How are you going to talk to kids about control when you can't exercise it yourself? All of a sudden, Sean Woods at, no at Moorhead State seems timid. Mike Montgomery, it seems like a non-issue. The list goes on and on in terms of some of the things that we've seen transpire with coaches and college college sports because this kind of stuff right here it's clearly beyond the pale Stephen and a. I, I, I'm, I'm going to listen a, let to me tell you as the I AD spoke might need to go. moments ago the AD has just spoken they have let go of Mike Rice it just happened just moments ago he simply says I was wrong moving forward I will work to regain the trust of Rutgers University so they have uh, let go of Mike Rice he is no longer the head coach for Rutgers uh, university. That's so, a start. That is a start. Well, at, at least I'm sure there will be more AD. to come. I'm yeah, sure there will be more to come. At the very least, the AD must be punished. I, I don't know if suspension is enough, but, yeah. but that would be a start also. That would be a start, and it needs to be a significant suspension at the very least. Okay, to, to further your point, let's frame this with what has happened before Mike Rice in the sport of college basketball. Let's also be careful to include the fact that, what was it, three or four players yesterday were quoted as saying they actually had no real problem with the way they were treated. But let's, let's look at the big picture. Let's go all the way back to Coach Knight. Coach Knight, as we know, could be rough on players. But Coach Knight was one of the greatest teachers of the game of basketball the sport has ever had. A lot of coaches, uh, sorry, a lot of parents sent their kids to Coach Knight almost like, sending to the Marines or to boot camp because they're going to graduate and they're going to come out better on the other side than when they went in. Now, there have been other coaches that, that are actually notorious in, in the sport of, of college basketball for being very difficult to deal with for players of practice. Rick Majerus 
could be verbally very abusive. Kevin O'Neill, back to his days at Northwestern, very abusive verbally. But I, I never heard about any firing basketballs at the heads of his players or or any sort of pushing or shoving. I, I didn't hear that. We're just talking about verbal abuse. And we're not talking about insults. We're just talking about being hard verbally on the players. No homophobic slurs. No, none of these references that we heard from Mike Rice. Well, listen, bottom line is this. I, I mean, playing for a coach, uh, you know, the great coach Clarence Big House Gaines, God rest his soul. I would be sitting here as a flaming hypocrite and a liar if I told you that he wasn't verbally abusive. That comes with the, that, that's par for the course with exactly. coaches. Coaches are going to get on you. I'm not going to overreact to that. You can, you can, you can, you know, sometimes you spew profanity. There's no question about that. And you raise your voice and you're yelling. That's fine. That, that comes with it. As a player, you've got to be willing to be able to take that. That's just life. When you play, I'm not going to hold a coach accountable for that. When you get all in people's personal face, nose to nose, and you're spitting in their face, when you put your hands on them, that's where it gets a bit excessive. But in terms of raising your voice and yelling at them, I'm not going to hold a judge, uh, a coach accountable for that. That comes with the game. That's just life. Have you ever heard of a coach consistently firing basketballs at his Never. players to make a point Never. in practice? No. I'm sorry. Thanks. Maybe I'm a little naive here. I haven't heard that one. And now Skip. I've seen it. Well, not only have I seen it, I'm trying to tell y'all right now, all the players that I've known for many, many years, Skip, I'm telling you right now, those players could say they, they, they're okay with it all they want. The players that I grew up with, the players that I've known since then, Oh, you're putting your hands on that coach at some point in time. If, 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 and that's after you tell him, look, you're crossing the line. You better not do that again. You're not going to tolerate it. At some point in time, you're going to lose it if you're taking that level of abuse. He's lucky he didn't get dropped by one of those players. I'm yeah. serious. And then we had, a, really a high, we had a highly respected ex-NBA player, Eric Murdoch, who obviously worked for Coach Rice for a while. He was let go by Rutgers. He does have, you can say, an axe to grind. Okay. But Stephen A., Eric Murdoch played nine years in the league. I, I respect what he was saying, and it, it, he said on camera for outside the lines, I have never seen anything like this. And that hit home with me. All right, you guys, yeah. just to and recap, uh, the AD says initially he thought in December it was better to rehabilitate Mike Rice. He says obviously his actions were wrong. And again, Mike Rice has been fired from Rutgers University. Uh, coming up next...